Hey everyone, this is uh, Travis here, and this is my Coleman Rubicon 1400 BH, and uh, done some stuff to it. I need to show you guys and uh, give you some uh, info on a lot of the stuff that you can't find on the internet. All right, for example, the solar mounting system. I didn't drill into the roof. Uh, I just used a turnabon and some 3M. Uh, very high uh, bonding tape and use marine grade wiring into the solar input up here and I stringed them in series so I can kick off the inverter um, there's also these mounting rails they're really small and thin and narrow but I'm planning on doing an awning in that alright let's take a look inside so I got my 5,000 watt battery from EG4 server rack mount and the EG4 3000K inverter. Um, a lot of issues that people are having with the setting up an inverter in this RV I see is that there's no documentation on how to do the inverter prep. So there's two ways. Um, you can either cut the, the yellow um, 120 volt uh, AC line that has the label inverter prep on it, but you gotta realize that the inverter prep line is actually just tied to the breaker for these outlets. And these outlets have little lightning bolts on them. So that outlet has one, uh, the one in the kitchen has a little lightning bolt on it. So pretty much that um, that cable, the inverter prep marked cable is only for the outlets. So it's not going to power your fridge, I mean your um, air conditioner. Uh, that, that actual air conditioner is tied into a specific breaker. Now if you want to do the entire RV off the inverter, you need to cut the orange cable which is the main line. That one's coming from the grid, uh, the shore power. So the shore power, uh, many of you probably already know. This is the shore power coming in and it's routed underneath all this stuff, that orange cable. And the orange cable feeds right into the breaker system. So I split that in half and I fed the shore power into AC input. And then I took the AC out and tied it into this breaker panel. So it interrupts the main line coming in, which is nice, which is what you want if you want to power everything. And for that, um, when you're plugged into shore, and if you're not getting enough solar, you can alter the settings on the inverter to rely on grid power. And you can turn it off to rely on solar power which is extremely nice because you can charge your battery while you're docked with shore power. Or if you need a boost, if you're not getting enough sun, that's a great alternative. Or if you want to use a generator, um, if you have one, you can recharge your whole system with a generator as well. Um, but that's why, that's how I did it. I interrupted the main line and so far it's been pretty self-sufficient. Um, it's powering the AC every day. It does a really good job. Now as for the front, I rearranged the tongue a little bit. The propane tank was here. I got a, an electric jack instead and installed this box, which has the toilet and tools. And then I put a lithium 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium ion energy battery in this front box. Then I went ahead and I had another battery, a 100 amp hour lithium battery. And I went ahead and uh, put them in parallel. So I have 200 amp hours. And so that I ended up feeding through here, some one, or some one gauge. And then I drilled a hole underneath into the under storage, into here. And I set up the other battery system. And I also got rid of the old SAE uh, connector for solar. So I got rid of the SAE connector, and then I put in Anderson, uh, they're like mini miniature Andersons, uh, for 
external solar to charge my battery. Um, I have a folding solar panel that I'm going to use to charge up the 12 volt if, if I need to, or I do use the converter that's built into the breaker. And then I mounted this, not, not the best looking because it's not conformed well, but this is mounted to my box. Um, hopefully that'll stay there. It's only 50 watts and got the 100 watt panel out here as well just to trickle charge it. And then let me show you the battery system that I had done under here. All right, and under here, that's where I drilled a hole into and put a bunch of silicone in a gasket and then routed and parallel this other 100 amp hour battery. And it's connected to my Renergy Rover. It's a uh, 20 amp uh, inverter or solar charge controller and two Bluetooth for communication and a 1500 watt um, inverter to power just in case my f my big 48 volt fails. I like having redundancy and it's not taking up too much space. So that's in there. And then I have the Renergy Core, which is tracking everything. And as you can see, I'm getting uh, about two amps of power at about 40 volt watts, I mean, it's charging both batteries. So the main issue with, I have had so far with this inverter is that it is hot in this thing. Um, when I have this bed closed, it actually gets so hot, it leaks to the other side and it shuts down the inverter and doesn't power the air conditioner anymore. It's an overheat protection. So I went ahead and drilled these three inch holes right here. Um, put these soffits in for now, but I'm going to, I bought, um, 12 volt fans that I'm going to do two up there because that's where the intake is. And this is the exit. This is where the exhaust is on the inverter. And I've got some, uh, dryer tubing, uh, to keep, you know, the heat going from there into this hole, which I drilled as well. And it pulls all the heat out into the cab. And then the air conditioner can cool. And then there's another hole over here. I'm gonna route more tubing around to get cold air to that inverter. So it doesn't overheat. And I highly recommend that. Um, I also um, got a uh, solar disconnect. The uh, EcoFlow 40 or uh, 400 watts folding solar panel. It's going to be used when I'm really going off grid. And how I have that connected to the 40 volt system, then I'm not using it for the 12 volt system, is I drilled a hole, and this is a um, um, MC4 connector for solar. And the reason why I have this here is since I have those solar panels in series on the roof, I wanted to keep going in the series so I don't have as much loss on uh, voltage. So each of those panels on the roof are, um, they're uh, rich solar panels. Each one is a uh, 24 volt panel and both are rated at 200 watts. So that's 600 watts at 120 volts up there. And this EcoFlow is a 40 volt, uh, 400 watt panel. So I'm going to run that in series. Uh, so I interrupted the solar coming from the roof and I have the positive here going the positive in here. So I interrupt this and break that bond up there, the series bond, and I'll plug in the positive from that panel and then the negative out of that panel into the here. So it completes the series. And this is in place to keep it connected in series well, I'm not using the portable panel. And that way I get close to um, six and four, about a thousand watts of solar. So um, that way I'm pretty good off grid. Um, yeah, so if I'm not using it and my 48 volt system's great, I'll just use a MC4 to Anderson connector and plug it up front and charge my uh, two 12 volt battery systems. And what's nice about that Renergy invert or uh, solar controller, it can take up to 100 volts DC. So it would have no problem with that uh, EcoFlow. But yeah, that's about uh, the gist of it. Right now the whole RV is running off of 
strictly um, solar. Even though I have the grid plugged in, I just have it just in case. And yeah, um, the other mod I did was the three inch lift. Got the uh, lift from E-Trailer. It's actually pretty easy to do. It took me an hour after work. Um, here's the lift mounting system. So it sits much higher and I put a spare tire under here as well. Um, having a full size spare would be nice if I get a flat or anything like that. And yeah, there's a, there's a gist of it. Got a lot more to do, but keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching.